Hi friends, Happy New Year, and today's actually January 1st, 2016, and so today I was going through um, my list of books that I've read over the last year, and I was a little bit surprised to see that I I only read 15 books this year, but this past year, 2020, 2015, which is a lot, a lot less than I normally do actually read, or significantly less, but it was kind of a chaotic year, um, so I can sort of see why it's less. There may have been actually 16 because I may have reread Hard World Wonderland by um, Murakami. Um, I can't remember if I reread that this year or if it was last the end of last year. So, but in any case, that would have been a reread, not a new read. But so what I thought I'd do is just run through, um, you know, the books that I read um, from my, from what I've figured, I read 10 that can be called science fiction fantasy. I read two that could, that are nonfiction, really literary nonfiction. I read uh, two nonfiction histories and one nonfiction philosophical work. So let's just run through the list real quick. I read all of my books, all of these books I read electronically. Um, I started out the year with uh, Ancillary Justice. And Ancillary Justice is by Anne Leckie. There it is. Um, and it's part of a trilogy, Ancillary Sword, uh, which I then proceeded to read next. And then Ancillary Mercy, which I read, um, you know, later in the year. Ancillary Sword has a very similar cover. I am not a big fan of the covers of this trilogy. But the trilogy itself um, is really um, good. Um, I did reviews of um, Ancillary Mercy, I think. There's Ancillary Mercy. So I read that one. It came out in October, and I read it in October. Um, so I did a review of that because I had started doing some videos by then, but, uh, definitely worth the time to read if you are interested in science fiction at all. Um, it had a couple of really interesting ways of storytelling, um, that I found to be very rich as far as world building went and just my own experience with the books, um, was really enriched by by the way that the stories were told. So um, check out my video on Ancillary Mercy where I touch on the trilogy at large. Uh, it was a very quick kind of chat I did about it. Um, but uh, this, one of the, the most uh, interesting things about this trilogy is that in this far distant human culture, they only use the female pronouns, so only she and her. And so you never really know the actual gender of most of the characters in, this, in the books. So I thought that was extremely um, fun to read. But after reading Ancillary Justice and Ancillary Sword, I then read a book called Dead Boys by... Gabriel Squalia. There it is. And this was really, 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 really a lot of fun. Um, this is a, more of a fantasy um, book. I could reread this again. Um, this takes place in an under, sort of the underworld um, limbo where um, the dead um, go... <sighs> These are the, 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 the dead, I think, that are more or less in a limbo kind of situation. Um, and so the main character there is um, knows taxidermy. And so what the dead down in um, the underworld tend to value is their bodies because their bodies slowly sort of mummify and they become skeletons. And they truly try to cling to uh, what they were in life um, um, as long as possible. So he gets, he gets a business going with taxidermy. Um, but it's, it's just very interesting as there's philosophical elements to it. Um, it's just a lot of fun. There's an event, you know, it's adventure to, um, a great cast of characters. Um, the thing about these people that wind up in down in the underworld is, um, they, you know, they weren't the most well-adjusted people, uh, in real life when they were living so um, they carry a lot of that down there with them in the underworld so 
definitely loved that. Um, really, really enjoyed that one a lot. And then after that, I read a book called Flex by Ferret Steinmetz. And, you know, I don't really remember now how I came across this book. I, oh, I know how. Um, it's the same place I heard about Dead Boys, and I don't remember the name of this blog, but it was a blog. It was a blog, and they were, and the blog was saying, oh, books to look for, I think it was in March, maybe, um, or April. Books to look for in March, new books coming out in March. And these were two of the books that were listed there. And um, I wound up buying, uh, reading both of them. There were more than these two, but these two were the two that I selected out of the whatever this blog had, the suggestions that were coming out in March. And I'm really glad. I mean, they were both really super duper good choices. This is Flex, the cover of Flex um, by Ferret Steinmetz. And then later on in the year, in October, um, there was um, another uh, installment of this series that's called the Mancer series, and I did a video on that. Um, and the, the second book is called The Flux, so let me go ahead and find that one for you. I, even though I read this in October, I loved Flex so much when I heard that The Flux was coming out. Here's The Flux. When I heard that there was going to be another book and it was already slated to come out in October and was available for pre-order, once I finished Flex, I immediately went and bought The Flux and had it on pre-order. And I did that with Ancillary Mercy, too, with the Anne Leckie, um Ancillary Justice, Ancillary Sword, Ancillary Mercy books. I knew that there, the third one was coming out in, in uh, October, and I pre-bought that one in, in April as well. And that's something I have never done in my life before. So I bought two, pre-ordered pre two books this year. Um, and both of them were really well worth it. So I kind of covered um, the Manser um, series, the Flex, Flex and the Flux, in the brief book chat I did on the flux, um, so I won't go into a lot of it uh, here. It's a it's an urban fantasy, so it sort of sit in our time, um, but it's in New York City. But in this particular um, universe, um, it's our world that we know, but um, there's magic in it, and there has always been magic in it. So, but the people who can do magic. Um, they get their magical skills through obsession. So whatever it is they've obsessed over. Um, so there's like a video game mancer. There's a bureaucromancer is the main character. He likes, is obsessed with bureaucracy. And so they get, they get magic surrounding that. And um, so if you want to hear a little bit more about this series, then you can check out my video that I did on the flux and it will explain a little bit more about them. But they were, it was just a really fun, um, fun world to enter um and the characters were were a lot of fun to me and it just worked real well for me and i i enjoyed it um after that i read the buried giant by ishiguro i think is how it's pronounced kazuo ishiguro and let me pull up its cover um it is, um, I did not do a video on it because this was before I had done any videos, but it, um, here's the cover of it. It got a lot of praise. Um, you know, it's literary. Um, he's written several other things. The other book of his that I have read is um, Never Let Me Go, um, which I absolutely loved. I read that a few years ago. And I've read The Remains of the Day. I think he wrote that, and I read that many years ago so it's been a long time since i've read that but this book has a really ethereal um you could almost call it fantasy but i don't i call it literary fiction because it was so literary really um but it takes place in this world where the the main characters the people are losing their memories they're losing their memories and they decide to go before they've completely lost their memory they've decided to journey to their um, son's village who is quite some distance away and the um, there's a mist that that is over the land that causes people to forget um, things and um, so they they're sort of on this quest to, to find him before they completely forget because they can't really remember much about him and sometimes they I think they even wonder if they are even if he ever even existed so it's got this kind of dreamy quality very well written very tight story um beautifully done beautiful prose um 
Also, I, I could highly recommend that. So I'm going to have to speed up because I'm going to run out of time here. But because um, I like to keep these below 15 minutes if possible. Um, the next book I read was called 1177 BC, very quickly. This is a nonfiction history book. This was totally absorbing. Of course, I love history. This is 1177 was this year when the Bronze Age ended, basically. There were all these great civilizations at the time that were flourishing, and there was a, an enormous amount of trade, especially in the eastern Mediterranean area, um, in the area of like modern-day Iraq, Turkey, Syria, um, Israel, Egypt, um, Greece. Um, this was a very flourishing area during the Bronze Age, and then abruptly it all kinds kind of ends, and one one after another of these civilizations collapses, and this book explores why. Totally interesting if you're into history, and that ancient history, uh, I could highly recommend that. And then I jumped to The City and the City. Um, the City and the City by, was by China, is by China Mayville, I think is how you pronounce his name. And um, this was the book, first book of his that I had ever read. I've been hearing about him forever and ever. And for some reason, I chose this one of his to read first. It might not have been the best choice. I really had a hard time with it. It wasn't that the book was, his world building is so confusing, which I, it, it gets criticized for sometimes. It was just that I just had a hard time getting into it. Um, so I may have picked the wrong one of his to start with. So I'm not giving up on him yet. I will try him again in the future. And then I read a book called Dying Every Day. This was nonfiction. This was about Seneca, the Stoic philosopher Seneca, at the court of Nero because he was in politics and uh, his life there in, in Rome. And so it was nonfiction. If you're into Stoicism, which I am, love it. I consider it my personal philosophy today. Um, Definitely worth a read. It provides sort of a really good uh, look at sort of the conflicted nature of Seneca, where he's the Stoic person with the Stoic values, and that's unquestionable. But then at the same time, he's he's actually a, an advisor to Nero, who is um, you know, obviously a, a decadent Roman emperor. So then I read a book called Pandora's Brain. This came recommended because I saw it on a podcast. Um, which the name of that podcast is totally escaping my is totally escaping my my um, my memory. There it is. And I saw an interview with him actually on YouTube. The author Callum Chase. Um, and this book is more about transhumanism, AI, the dangers of AI, AI. Um, going into being transferred into humans. And so it was really interesting from that standpoint, if you have an interest in that. Then jumping to the Wild Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Murakami. Um, Murakami, I just, is one of those authors that I can never go wrong with. Um, every book I read of his, I love. This one has a horrible cover because this is an electronic edition that I got, um, but I loved it. Um, I love all his books. I can recommend his stuff if you like this kind of magical realism uh, and different realities. Um, then I read a book called The Lord of All Things, uh, which I hated. Um, the Lord of All Things, I got it was a it was a giveaway. It had won an award, and I did an, a review of this. This is a science fiction book. This is another transhuman thing in a way. Um, I did not get into this at all. I had several problems, not the least of which I thought it was highly misogynistic. There's a review on it if you want to see it. Then I read Ancillary Mercy, which I won't show you because I've already showed you that. Then I read The Flux, which was the second one of the Flex and Flux. I've already showed you that. And then I read um, a book, Leviathan Wakes. I had this goal. I've done a review on that too. Did not love it. It wasn't horrible. James A. S. A. Corey, it's a TV show now. It wasn't horrible, but I just could not get into it. It drug for me, and it, it had good points and bad points. If you're interested in it, um, check out the video that I did on it. And then the last book I read this year that I just finished is Mind and Cosmos. This is a, this is a nonfiction book. Um, by Thomas Nagel, who is a philosopher at NYU, and he's making the point that Darwinian um, reductionism, scientific reductionism, is not the best way to explain the universe, and neither is the theological sort of creationism, so he's trying to look for another uh, way to know the universe. So that's it. That's quick. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to say until next time, catch you later. Bye.